When routing packets, a router will use its routing table. This routing table is made up of information that will assist the router when routing packets from one location to another location. There are three things needed for creating a route. First is the destination IP address and its subnet mask. Second is the default gateway IP address. And third is the interface. Routers acquire this information either statically or dynamically. Static routing are manually configured routes. These routes also referred to as static routes, are added manually by a person into a routing table. Static routes are fixed and can only be changed manually. This is one of the limitations faced with static routing. If there is a failure or change in the network, a static route cannot reconfigure itself to maintain network connectivity. Another shortcoming with static routing is that it is prone to human errors. If the information is entered incorrectly, the route will not work as required. Dynamic routing takes the manual process out of the hands of the network admins and gives it to a protocol. A routing protocol to be more precise. Protocols like RIP and ISIS are two examples of dynamic routing protocols. So if a new router is added to a network, or if a link goes down, the routers within the network goes into a process of reaching convergence. This process requires the routers to exchange information with each other. When this exchange is completed, the routers will be in a state of convergence, meaning each has a certain amount of information on the others. With dynamic routing, the performance of the network can be greatly improved. For example, if a link goes down, the routers can automatically reconfigure themselves to use an alternative route and maintain network connectivity. This is called having fault tolerance. One thing to keep in mind is that static and dynamic routing are not mutually exclusive. They can work together on a single router. This is common when one device on a network needs to access a device on a different network. Because both devices are behind different routers, a static route may be required for creating that connection. So in conclusion, routing tables are created by adding routes. These routes can be added statically or dynamically. Static routing requires manual configuration and dynamic routing uses routing protocols to configure its routes. That's all for now on routing. Head over to HeyMIT for more information.